Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a radio meter RLC meter MM2. And this is the MM2A version. Um, the initial design is from 1971. Um, they went through uh, several different uh, revisions. And this uh, one is from 1974. It can, of course, measure resistors, inductors, and capacitors, and uh, it will cover the range, as you see here, all the way from picofarad to microfarad. And uh, yeah, resistors and inductors, like I said, you need to connect um, connect your parts using different uh, bananas here, so that's quite easy when everything is explained that well. And of course, this is using AC um, to measure everything. And it changes different frequencies depending on the ranges. It also does this um, for resistors. No, it don't. It seems like it is actually going in 160 hertz mode for all resistors. I've just been reading in the manual and that is uh, explained a little bit differently and it looks a little bit like um, they do actually change frequencies. Um, I think it has something to do with handling um, you know, capacity and stuff like that in, in your test system. So I don't know if this is really true um, or not, but I will double check indeed. Uh, this is down here is exactly like it is in the manual so yes um, that should be fairly accurate and up to date and even back in the 70s DC bias was a thing and that is because capacitors changes behavior when you apply DC to them and a lot of people actually don't know this today so this is kind of the forgotten wisdom of capacitors. So <laughs> when you put them across a high voltage, you have less uh, capacitance compared to what you think you have. So read the specifications carefully about the parts you use or use a device like this to measure what you got. So you can actually apply DC and it will, of course, go to, go to your... Uh, capacitor uh, measurement and then you can uh, connect a recorder back in the good old days um, old data uh, <laughs> storage was done either by hand or by mechanical uh, XY recorders I've already shown you a few videos about uh, recorders I love recorders so <laughs> that is some technology from the stone age but that is how we used to do it when i was a little baby kid it's really nice to see the the mm2 i'm actually only uh, super familiar with the mm1 because that was the first instrument i actually got when i was a very young kid it was a very very old instrument even then but i used my mm1 for many many years so let's uh, let's try and power the MM2 up here and see how well that works if it if it works or not. I've connected a one nanofarad um, capacitor, and that is mains applied. And let's push that button, and it lights and shine. So capacitance one nanofarad full scale, and that is very very close to one nanofarad is it actually responding to yes it is wow that is great so it seems like it is working and there isn't any lethal lethal uh, voltages or anything um, this thing runs off plus minus 11 volts um, so that means you can easily touch everything here Hey, I want to try something else. So that is a 3 nanofarad 
range and it's the same. And yes, it does indeed. Let's try and remove it completely and then go down to the the finest range. Is it that one? Three picofarad. So what if I take oh yes indeed. Just mount it close to the other one without touching. Ah ha ha and you can even see that. <laughs> so if we take some piece of plastic here, I just bend this one a little bit further away. Ha ha ha. That tells me we got all the good sensitivity we really want. That is one picofarad, give or take. And this is the range is uh, three picofarad full range. So it's again like a few percent too little. So that is really nice. I am actually quite impressed. Let's uh, Let's go all the way to the maximum then. Uh, this is actually a little bit typical me, um, just to try some stuff instead of reading the entire manual first. But I'm now in maximum range in a microfarad. That is 100 microfarad is what it says down there, right? 100. And this is 100. So if I put 100, oh, we are now in C. Okay, so if I put this one here and it goes Pretty good. All right. So far, so good. So what if I wanted to try this C more than 100? It should, of course, also measure exactly 100. What if it is 101, right? So obviously I should also be able to, to do that. So the idea is, I think, you take this capacitor and then you connect it here, right? And if you want to do that, you want to have you're going to go in the R function and then you put the capacitor here and then see, ha ha. But then, now you know that this thing is going at 160 hertz, I assume. And then you go like this, exactly. And here we go. Now we are 100 microfarad at full range because now we are using this method and now we can go up again to 300 right uh, it's actually not that simple uh, you need to be here it says 100 to 5000 otherwise if you are in c mode all the other starting here from picofarad and all the way to 100 microfarad. So far, so good. Now you want to go over to the 100 to the 5000, then you are here and you must have the knob here and then you need to move the capacitor here. So this is, and then you, of course you change scale. So now you're here for this scale. So this is a 220 and see the scale. 200 and something, right? So it works. And if this is removed, then it hammers up because there's nothing. So I actually think it works. Now I'm just trying to make this a little bit faster. So this is 100 micro Henry. We have an L it's connected here. And again, see the knob here is for 100 micro. And yes, it also works. And here we are now in resistor, 1K full range. This is 820 ohms. And look at that. Of course it works. So I'm eager to open this thing and uh, let's see what is inside. It's actually always funny. That is a half of my fun. That is to figure out how I open stuff. <laughs> I thought it was a good idea to take away the, the side panel and then have a look about how to open it. But obviously that was not a good idea. So now I go for this one because it looks a lot like there's a lot of electronics on the front and some stuff on the back. And it, yeah, it appears to, to be like that, all right? 
this is actually getting more and more fun this so that is the side panels and I took off the top and the back that is in one piece right and then look at that there's also this and there's another plate here so that plate and then there's this piece of metal here got two layers why why is that a thing you're not supposed to see we got other screws down here hmm that is funny 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 honey so i will take away the bottom as well and then we are all the way in right yeah that is how it's done right now that is one beautiful beautiful instrument and you can access everything well maybe if i take away that plate maybe i'll be able to access the solder side of that PCB and this is that is something I want to challenge oh, look at the look at the wiring up here isn't that just sexy and then it goes back and forward and and what have you got all those got three wires going to that point oh this is nice what do you think about that and there is actually look at this shield there is a press nut here that is not in use Like that high quality precisions precision resistors and that is the deck they're using for all the switches look at that is extra big distance to avoid all sorts of unwanted couplings even a shield plate here and the wires are carefully connected like that You've already seen that you can easily measure one picofarad and all that, so it's definitely no joke to make this. Okay. There's not a beautiful way to do that. And a, a good big meter. Yeah, it's uh, definitely super beautiful mains goes in a good strong cable holder here and then ground to chassis and then there's what is this doing okay from that same point ground goes to the connector that goes to your plotter or something right yes this is your recorder yeah you can say what you want about that because what if this screw goes loose that means there is no chassis connection but you your wall plug goes out to your plotter yeah so that is that will be the the power supply with the signal diodes and the two transistors because that's all there is to it plus minus 11 volt oh yeah and a little extra shield plate and this is a lot more modern than a lot of other things that i have played with recently see all the nice and beautiful silk screen and probably computer layout yeah 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 look at that no this is still the 
the layout here is definitely looking like manual layout style the angles and the way that it's just smooth around like that and no tracks are straight and anything like that so yeah we still go for manual layout but that's also quite all right and also two pieces of aluminium here in the front this is not the right front plate there's another one right see so that means we could take this off as well or they could make this in different languages and stuff like that so this means i can also take away the the rear plate Oh, I love it. I guessed right. And they because this is quite thin and lightweight, they added extra isolation here. So if you push real hard here and bend this in to touch some stuff, you're not going to uh, have a bad sword circuit. Also note the standoff distance here is quite small. So this is also a shield for all this. So now you got full access to the entire circuit board from the bottom and we didn't take away any wires or anything we can still power it up we can still play around with everything and here we go now we can read all the text and stuff and look what i'm saying about the the layout style and this is clearly manual style the way that the lines are bent, and the way that they follow here, the way that they, they initially had the idea, oh, we need big distance from mains, and then everything else goes here, and we don't know how much distance we need, so uh, we do this and that. It's, it's quite obvious when you know what to look for. But it's a beautiful layout. Can you imagine how long time it takes to do this manually? no computers that is i just love the way that they've probably been drawing this a million times on on paper and doing all sorts of versions <laughs> oh this is nice yeah that is a beautiful radio meter And it really works. So it is very, very close to 50 years old. As far as I can imagine. All I have to say is bye bye. And uh, see you again tomorrow.